One way that we can think about identity is through our relationship to the idea of home. By home, I'm referring mostly to the idea of a homeland, a nation state, a place on the map with boundaries and edges, which can also be described as an imagined or constructed community. I'm what is called a new Canadian, someone who's recently chosen this location as my homeland. As a settler who has sworn allegiance to the queen in order to claim citizenship, um, I'm actually from Indonesia. In my homeland of origin, where I went to school in the 1980s, there was a militaristic government where education and, me and media were strictly controlled in order to instill a unified sense of national identity. While I was in school there, we all wore uniforms. We had ceremonies every week to raise and lower the flag. We learned how to march in gym class. We sang revolutionary songs. It's perhaps because of all of this that I'm so interested in ideas of nationalism and national identity and questions about how these uh, ideas of nationalism are constructed and how these allegiances are defined. As a printmaker, I'm fascinated by the notion of copying, the ways that du the duplication and circulation of information contribute to the formation of knowledge and the histories that are revealed through the selection of images that are copied. I'm also interested in fiction and how storytelling and made-up narratives have the potential to question, critique, and reimagine the world that we inhabit. While my own education into nationalism was quite overt, I'm also interested in the more subtle ways that ideas of who we are supposed to be and what we should identify with are presented in popular culture. For instance, children's books and toys give powerful and seemingly in innocent contexts for the teaching of cultural norms. This is why I work in childish and simplistic illustrations in this series. How do we develop ideas about what it means to belong to a particular group? How do these ideas circulate in popular culture? In what ways are group identifications seen as celebratory? And in what ways can they be seen as ominous? The works that I'm showing here are from a series called The Further Adventures of Girl, in which I try to work with these questions, taking cues from images and stories from the mass media, remaking them into ambiguous narratives. Another way that national identity can be communicated is through the slogans and images used to instill civic pride. For instance, banners can be seen in major streets and in uh, advertising for tourism. Objects and pictures geared towards tourists generally present an idealized, sanitized, and celebratory version of a particular place, an official and sanctioned narrative. These next two slides are from a piece that I did for the city of Vancouver in 2011, um, which was all about souvenirs. Souvenirs are often in the form of mass-produced miniatures that are made for people visiting from elsewhere so that a representation of a place that they have just visited can be taken home as proof of their travel and stands in for their experience. In this animation, the series of four animations, girl lands in Vancouver, negotiates all the landmarks in Vancouver, and basically takes them home with her. So she takes home Gassy Jack, and in this case, the steam clock. In the next two slides, they're from a public art project I did for the city of Richmond called Here's There Is Here. In this series, a girl is seen negotiating landscapes that have both spaces of Richmond and Jakarta in them. Increasingly, we see similar structures and architecture across different countries, creating a sense of familiarity and, re and dislocation all at once. This work arose from my first uh, visit to Aberdeen Center in Richmond, where I felt like I was in a mall in Jakarta, and I felt completely at home. In this series, a girl is always reaching for something somewhere else, straddling two worlds, but grounded in neither. In all of these works in the Girl series, I wanted to make pictures that seemed as machine-made as possible and easily reproduced to mimic mass-produced images to remove the hand of an individual author. I wanted to create scenarios that seemed easily recognizable and identifiable, where a girl could function as a blank slate for the projection of numerous stories and anyone could step into her shoes. In my more recent works, I've gone back to working with a hand and with acts of imperfect copying. As opposed to the perfection suggested by digital copying and creating clones of an image, I've become more interested in the ways that information becomes distorted and reconfigured through hand copying and the potential for new narratives that happen in that translation by hand. Volcanoes are quite central to much of the Indonesian landscape. Much of the island of Java, where I was born, is dotted with volcanoes. The image of the volcano is often referred to in films and media about Indonesia as a way to signify an exoticized other, an unfamiliar landscape, and becomes a stand-in for the actual experience of the land. Many postcards of Indonesia feature volcanoes. These volcano drawings are taken from early 20th century sources that I found online, then reprinted and copied, taking them through numerous stages of reproduction and redrawing them. While these drawings look quite different than the Girl series, at heart I'm still looking at similar questions. How do we form narratives of national identity? How does an aspect of a landscape, for instance, start to form a part of a national narrative? 
Currently, I'm paying attention to ornamentation and decoration and the ways that pictures that are used in decorated surfaces, such as textiles and porcelains, may communicate a narrative of a place and the different cultural influences that occur in a single place. In this drawing, for instance, I'm copying pictures from batik cloths from Java, as well as from textiles from the UK, all of which use as source images pictures that are reimaginings of other cultures. In this female centaur, for instance, there's a pastoral landscape on a British uh, textile that was a copy of a painting. And then there's Garuda birds, which are uh, symbols of Indonesia that are actually taken from Hindu mythology. And these are all ink on paper. In this drawing called The Moment They Collided, some of the image sources are from pictures found in European porcelain, such as the strange camel you see on the, on the left and the um, crocodile on the right. Um, perhaps drawn from other people's stories and descriptions of exotic sites that they've never actually seen. In these drawings, I'm looking at imagined representations of the other, the other being those outside the boundaries of one's own imagined community, such as European imaginings of Asia and Asian imaginings of Europe and the Americas, all colliding and commingling, making something new. Interspurts in these drawings are printed half-tone dots, reminiscent of the printing process, the language of mechanical reproduction, the language of copying. Through my work, I hope to bring about conversations about our expectations about the identities that we lay claim to and embrace the potential for more complex imagining of narratives of place and embrace the multiplicity of allegiances and homelands that many of us identify with. Thank you.